what we're going to look at today is what my BTEC is, how it can save you time, how you know that you're doing it right, and then how you can get started with my BTEC. So just quickly to begin, what is my BTEC? Well, my BTEC is an um, administrative piece of software that has been designed by Pearson for the running of BTEC qualifications. It's designed specifically for that purpose, so compared to other pieces of admin software that you might use or tracking software that may not understand the intricacies of my BTEC or the administrative processes involved in running a BTEC qualification, my BTEC is designed specifically for that task and it's designed by Pearson. So hopefully you will see over the next few minutes how my BTEC can really help you with the administration of your course, save you time and also make it easier for you and ensure that you're definitely doing everything correctly. <clears throat> so in front of you is a flow diagram for the running of a BTEC uh, course from the beginning when you recruit learners all the way through to claiming certification for those learners and as we know having delivered BTEC there are many steps to that. Often each uh, piece has its own paper trail. There's a comprehensive audit that needs to be kept for quality assurance reasons. And in the top right hand corner of that slide you can see all the different documentation that is required and we do know that this documentation does change depending on the qualifications. So we know that delivering um, a BTEC and the administration involved in, de in delivering a BTEC can be quite complicated and we understand that what you want to concentrate on and what your learners want you to concentrate on is the teaching and learning. So all of these steps in front of you are the ones that are required and it should, in a second, this should turn yellow for all the time-saving digitization that happens when you are running a, um, a BTEC course using my BTEC. So you can see how many steps there are automated, have documentation that is produced in the correct format, the Pearson approved format, and that stores the audit trail in a digital portfolio for you online so it can't be lost. So this is how my BTEC can save you time. It can cut out all of those steps. I think an interesting um, fact is for the average level three national BTEC, for one course you might write the word P1 411 times. For uh, if you use my BTEC, you will never write that word again. So um, it just shows you how, how much of a time saving advantage it can be. So this is what my BTEC does. Essentially, it digitizes the assessment planning and tracking process. It's linked to the Pearson systems. So it already is um, it's aware of the rules of combination for your center, the courses that you've got clearance to run. It knows all the assessment criteria. If some of those rules change halfway through a course, it knows them because you are connected directly to the Pearson computers. It gives you the authorized assignment briefs. It can help you with grading calculations. So no more thumbing through the back of the specification it will tell you on screen exactly what you uh, what your learners are going to get. It's also a tool that's for you. It's not yet for learners, but that is in the pipeline. And it's designed by you to help you. Um, it's not going to be forced upon you. If, if what you see here isn't to your liking, Pearson are not going to make you use it. But we have designed it to help you with the delivery of your BTEC qualifications in your centre. It's purely for external assessment, not exams, but you can uh, track some of those external units by manually entering the grades that your learners get for some of those results and it can be used alongside your other tracking systems. You'll see as we go through the presentation that at every stage um, documents can be exported as either uh, Word or Excel files which can then talk to your other tracking systems. So it's built by Pearson for BTEC like I've said and it's specifically for this task so it helps you to know that you're doing everything correctly. It saves you time by digitizing a lot of the processes like I said skipping out some of the words that you might need to enter manually that's all done for you and we'll have a screen share in a minute from uh, my colleague Ben who will show you how quick it is to set these things up. So how does it save you time? Why do you know you're doing it right? So the control of your BTEC qualification happens in one place. It allows your team, and I've noticed when you were registering there are a lot of teams that have uh, signed into this webinar together. It allows everybody in that team to work together and have their documents in one place that everybody can access. And it means you don't have to constantly be printing out pieces of paper and handing them around. So everybody who's involved in that course, from management all the way down to the assessors, will know uh, what documentation is required and how to access it. So this is how it works and how it saves you time. A lot of stuff is done through these automatic wizards. So a preloaded form that you know will generate a document in the Pearson approved uh, format. So the whole um, 
the whole thing works through these workflows. So creating assignment, as you can see from this screen capture on here, it's as simple as putting in the title of the assignment and linking it to a course. And it knows which courses your centre has got clearance for and it knows all the rules of combination for them. So it won't let you put in assessment criteria that are not relevant for that assignment or that unit. So generating assignments is as simple as clicking on boxes. Uh, if you have some assignment briefs that you already really like, then you can just simply copy and paste from um, any word processor document into the uh, wizard and it will formulate those documents on there. Um, so, and it generates a Pearson approved document which can be exported as a PDF or as a Word file. Those can then be sent to your SV or to anybody that is uh, involved in the course or you can grant anybody access in order to look at the files in my BTEC. So in terms of the assignments, once they've been created, they are there in a, um, a central uh, online holding um, area so that you, all the assignments for your centre are there that you have created and not only that, the authorised assignment briefs for all the, for all the qualifications for which you um, have access are automatically in there as well and then you just need to add the dates to them and go through the internal verification process. So speaking of internal verification, uh, that is also done automatically and digitally and you can see that quite a lot of the areas that um, are filled out in the IV form are already greyed out and say populated by my, by my BTEC template for you. This is another way that saves you time because those areas are already done for you by the, the my BTEC template but also you know you're getting it right you can't put the wrong qualification details on, you can't put the incorrect unit details so all those little administrative um, slip-ups or errors or things that would take you time going through the fine tooth comb when doing the uh, administration or creating the paperwork for your standards verifier that's now gone, it's all completely done for you so you can be confident that you're doing it correctly and, you can, and it saves you time in the process as well. So it's designed for you to meet all the requirements much, much more quickly. And that means you can focus on the qualitative uh, statements that need to be filled in in that internal verification document by supporting your, your assessment team and helping people to share best practice around the centre. So the courses are really simple to set up as well. Course leaders can set up um, a course within a few clicks. They can add units to a course, give it a title, and my BTEC knows the rules of combination for both the current uh, qualifications, the new NQF nationals from 2016. It's connected centrally to the Pearson computers that are used for certification. So you will know as soon as you start planning your course whether it is fit for purpose and you can be confident that you've chosen the correct units in the correct combination and the correct number of units. Um, Assessment plans are now becoming the first port of call for standards verifiers when um, planning your quality assurance process and this helps you to produce them in your the Pearson, um, the Pearson format. Not only that, what it does is you can adapt these as they go. We know that they're living documents and anything that you adapt on this assessment plan will automatically adapt it on the assignment brief and vice versa. So if you make any edits for dates, for distribution, for who the IV is that will automatically update not only the assessment plan but also the assignment brief and these would need to be ticked off by the lead internal verifier. So again this is a document that is really central to the administration of running a BTEC but you don't have to worry about it uh, being in the correct format um, and it will save you time producing that document. Again assessing evidence is a new feature that's been added in this last year and it makes creating the evidence for your learners incredibly quick it is um, simply going through all the registered learners, you tick a box as to where they, uh, what grade they've got and then you can concentrate on the qualitative uh, feedback that your learners need in order to improve. So it helps you meet all the requirements in less time. It also understands about resubmissions, whether the learner has met the criteria for resubmissions and automatically generates the paperwork for resubmissions and links to the internal verification of assessment records. Um, so like I said, helps you to meet the um, resubmissions, you can create them in a click of a button, send them um, to be and added into your assessment record. Um, it's also a progress tracking piece of software um, uh, online, so you can see from the top screen grab there that you can look at learners 
results for units and if you click on the unit itself it will break it down um, into each assessment criteria so it's very detailed you can set target grades for your learners it knows how many points they currently have and you can help them to work out how many points they need in future like I said at the start this can speak to your other tracking software very easily because everything can be exported as a CSV or an Excel file which can then speak to your other tracking devices you can also print them out as PDFs and just simply forward them to members of staff that may need to see those tracking details so it's easy to use step-by-step -step wizards for key tasks that help you out with the generation of your paperwork um, it helps you to keep tabs of what you're doing because when you log in there will be a my tasks button at the top so if you have to IV a colleague's work or if you have assessment criteria assessment work that needs uh, filling in when you log in um, there will be a my tasks you click on that and it will take you straight to what you need to do all the documents as I've said are in uh, Pearson approved format and can be exported in a variety of file types. Um, downloading these documents in these file types can include PDFs or docs um, and it's as simple as simply clicking on a drop down menu and exporting the file. <clears throat> the other great thing about MyBTech is it's browser based. There's no software, you can access it from anywhere, there's no IT setup so as long as you access it through the URL which is mybtech.pearson.com you can make sure that you have access to that at any time and you don't need to ask your IT department to help you install another piece of software. Uh, this is running slightly slowly on my machine because I'm streaming the event and I'm also using a demo site. Um, but uh, this is the all the uh, subjects or sectors which we currently run so I'll just choose um, business now, some of these drop downs take a while to populate, and that's because it whizzes off to Pearson Core Systems and, and looks everything we do, and it uses the same bit of software. Someone asked about this on, on the uh, in the chat room just now, uh, which our certification systems use. So it should always be correct. So when I ask it for the BTEC courses in the nationals it's going to our core database and pulling that back likewise pathway then it'll pull all the units through so it's using all the same algorithms that our certification systems use so it can't theoretically uh, at least it can't be wrong so we'll go for a um, foundation diploma so medium size qualifications so that is the questions it's asked you and it's going to use that information to pull through now a list of units which uh, are possible and then we'll move to stage two here so first thing you can see here is the qualification date so if we enter course start and finish dates so let's um, start this on 1st of August and the course finish date now here the latest you can go with this course if you wanted to is 2023 and that's because the certification end date is 2023 so it's just one little example of how it stops you doing anything wrong going down any blind alleys in terms of dates for your courses uh, or rules of combination of units um, so there's no blind alleys for your learners here uh, is the course on the top half of the screen there's four mandatory units pre-populated into your course that represents 390 guided learning hours out of a required 510 and in the bottom half of the screen here we can see all the optional units uh, and here we can see the sizes that they appear in so that's a useful information for planning we're, we're on the 510 size here but so let's uh, select a couple of units and add them to the course. Now that gives us exactly the size of course we need. So that is the minimum size that we can produce a course. We can go larger, so we can add additional units beyond that. That's just an example of how this system's flexible as my BTEC needs, as BTEC needs it to be. So you might have an extra unit in this course and half the learners do one unit, half learners do the other unit. This this system's designed around that sort of BTEC flexibility. Uh, so this is a valid course. So it's, it's not just checked the size, the total there, it's checked any sort of barred combinations or 
or um, anything like that. And that's it. Oh, I don't think I clicked on the finish date. Let's do that. There we go. Right, and then we can now uh, just quickly review that and confirm. Now, I won't confirm, so I, I want to delete it again. Okay, and there's the course we've just created in our list of courses. And I can delete that again if I choose to. Later down the line, when you've used this course to go further through the process, you, it stops you deleting it so that you, you don't uh, delete any data you might need. So now let's go into a course that we've created and see the next um, couple of actions that we can do. Okay, so let's use one of these courses where I've got five learners on here. Yeah, so I had a couple of other questions already about um, internal verification, uh, for example. So let's have a look at that. So we've got a draft assignment here and two IB approved assignments. Uh, this one's not finished yet, so it's not quite ready to send to IV, but uh, you, you can see that you can send them to internal verification. You get that form, which um, uh, which Tom showed you on the screenshot, and then once they've been IV, they uh, appear, appear here. So this one's issued to learners, and this one's been marked. So you, so you can see here just a bit of the workflow. Once the assignment has been uh, created here in this tab here it can be added to the assessment plan assessment plan is easy to edit like so so anything which has already happened can't be edited anything which has yet to happen can easily be changed if you change a date on the assessment plan then you change the date on the assignment brief automatically and vice versa so everything's linked together there's nothing getting out of step nothing needing updating you just make the change once and that's that's it. You can also change the uh, people that are involved. This is the tab furthest to the right, and that shows the sort of product of your endeavours, really. So, build a course, add your assignments, add your assignments to the assessment plan, IV your assignments. You mark your assignments and then all that data ends up here so in your assignment brief you selected assessment criteria x y and z they were awarded or not awarded for each learner and here you can see all those assessment criteria from your assignment briefs pulled through totaled up to a unit level achievement you can export that This is the last thing I want to demonstrate at this point. It's the tracking grid. Now, this uses the same bit of uh, coding again that does the certification. So it works out the grades for your learners using the same bit of coding that, you, that creates the certification. So it can't be wrong. So here for this learner here with a nice name, I can put merit for that unit. Level one for the exam because he doesn't like exams. Merit pass pass. And uh, I'm going to target for him a pass. Update that. Wait a sec. Okay, so now we can see that uh, this guy, Ben Swift, is predicted, if you were to get that in each of his units, to come out with a pass overall. His targets was only a level 2 pass, so uh, there's no much, there's not much intervention needed there, uh, if that's his target. And uh, as you mark, these predicted grades are overwritten by real grades, so the predicted grades are editable, but when you finish marking, when you mark that last criterion for 
the last assignment for this unit, then that's a final grade then, and that appears here. So it's all tied together in the uh, digital workflow in that way. All the time you're in my BTEC, you've got a task this here. So anything which is sent to you by a colleague, anything which is outstanding appears here in this view. So here I've got some marking to IV sample. Uh, I'm logged in as quality nominee, so some role claims waiting approval. Uh, we'll come back to that. Um, and an, ass an assignment brief waiting review. And you, you can just go into any task directly from here. So you don't have to look around in here to find what's outstanding. You've got a, a list. So in my case, it's the things outstanding, and you can use that to go directly to the relevant place. So hopefully this next part of the presentation will um, will help you to uh, uh, understand some of these terms that we're talking about and how you claim some of the roles. So um, if we just uh, move on. So th like we said before, my BTEC is designed for the full team and it's designed to give the full team access and to help you, um, whatever your role, to administer these BTECs. So, like we said, and like Ben said, the, it starts with the quality nominee. We know that there is a quality nominee in every single center, and that quality nominee has to have the overview of all the BTEC courses that are being delivered in that center. Um, and also, when they have their RQM meeting once a year, they need to be able to tell the, uh, the quality manager exactly what it is that is going on within your center. Now, Instead of everyone having to print out their assignment briefs or assessment plans, their IV documentation, and take it all in one big box file and have a big meeting, now the quality nominee has got access to everything for every course by one simple login. Like Ben said, it's linked to your Edexcel online login. So everybody needs an Edexcel online login in order to run the courses, and that's linked with my BTEC. And Ben will show you that in a minute. So the 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 way that it works is that the quality nominee or within your subject the lead IV can view the entire course structure, see which learners are taking the units, they can complete the assessment plan, they can review the IV of the assignment briefs. So do all of the tasks that are required for the administration of that My BTEC. Um, and these can also be shared with anybody that needs to in terms of the monitoring. So um, it allows course leaders lead IVs and quality nominees, that overview that's so essential without having to print out the reams of paper and having to have uh, box files filling up your office space uh, because everything is online in a really neat digital audit trail. So these are the different roles and these match the ones that were at the start. So we've got all of them covered within this training here and it's a hierarchical system. So everyone at the top can do everything, um, can do all the roles below them. So the quality nominee has full access to everything, every single course, lead IVs just for that particular subject for which they are the lead IV, course leaders can create courses within those subjects, internal verifiers, um, they can approve assignments and they can um, sample assessment decisions, uh, the assessor can create assignments, can mark assignments and would then send them to the internal verifier above them. And at the bottom you have teachers that may not be carrying out assessments, so people that perhaps are tracking, monitoring, inter doing intervention strategies, perhaps you, have, perhaps you have guest lecturers who come in and they just need to be able to have some view access and monitor learner progress and my BTEC can recognize that role as well. And any role that is claimed, you're given the correct access that that role requires. So for some people who were saying that they didn't have certain tabs um, when they logged into my BTEC, that's because you haven't claimed your role. So I think Ben will go through that in a minute, but what you need to do is in the top right hand corner you need to click on claim role, that sends an email to your quality nominee and you just need to get them to claim the role. I think I'm right in uh, thinking that the lead IV can also um, authorise different roles within their subject, but Ben will clarify that when he comes back on the mic. So we know that in some small centres, um, it might not work just hierarchically and simply as that. Some people might have to do more than one role, and I think we had a question on that earlier that I typed an answer to. And my BTEC understands that. So in this situation, someone might be a course leader in sport, but they might be an assessor in business. And you can have more than one role in more than one qualification. My BTEC understands that, um, and hopefully you can have those different roles and the different access depending on what you need. So my BTEC, built by Pearson, helps you with the courses, the assignments, the assessment plans, all of the steps that are required from setting up your course to um, giving the grade calculation at the end and claiming your certification.
So the first thing you do on arrival is go to admin. So for a brand new user, you wouldn't be able to see courses or assignments. These two wouldn't be here. You would just have home, support, which gives you these uh, links out to various uh, places to uh, get information. So it goes straight to Ask the Expert. You can book this very webinar. Um, and it gives you all the, the usual links to the different sort of customer service teams and so on and some other information here. But the first place you come is the admin screen. And you click here, claim a role. Or for most users, you'll, you'll have the claim a role link here as well. I'm logged in as a quality nominee, actually. Um, so I'll, I'll show you a bit. Normally, you'd click here. And uh, you'll see a list of subjects down the left. Now, Edits Online already knows I'm quality nominee, so it's not going to let me claim any roles. But you, you select the um, subject and the role, such as Lead IV, uh, IV Assessor. When you've claimed it each the correct role for each subject you're involved in, you see a question at the bottom, would you like to claim any more roles? You select No, and then a Submit button appears. So you have to go... You have to select no I don't want to claim any more and then click submit and then it comes through to the quality nominee and on the quality nominees page it looks like this um, so obviously this is dummy data down here so lots of nonsense names but you can see that this chap here demo assessor for art and design is uh, merely a teacher. Uh, meanwhile, this chap, demo course lead for land, uh, is the lead internal verifier. So I can approve him, and then he can ac he can access that subject, and he can do all the actions uh, available. Meanwhile, this chap um, here. Just... Yep. I Go ahead. To confirm um, a couple of people. A couple of people have asked if they can be the lead IV for more than one subject. They can do, can't they? Yes, absolutely. Yep. So, yep. Good question. Uh, yes, you can be the, uh, in in my BTEC. You can be the lead IV for more than one subject. You, it, there's it's total flexibility. It, it merely records what you claim. If if your quality nominee says yes, you can be the lead IV. Then you can you can be the lead IV. So anyway, this is the sort of the screen which the quality nominee has to control. Uh, we've just had another quality nominee question. Sorry, Ben. Um, just saying that um, a quality nominee can't see any other staff. Is that because they won't have claimed a role yet? Yeah, that's correct. So one thing I really want to do for this system is add a function so that users don't have to claim a role uh, if the quality nominee would rather set them up. So basically, uh, the a new user comes in, as I described, selects admin, claims a role, and then that pings that uh, pings the quality nominee appears on their screen here for them to approve it appears in their task list here for them to approve if no one's claimed a role then obviously then there won't be any claims to approve uh, this is actually role approval here so look, you have a new user role awaiting approval and this just takes you back to the task list to the um, role claim list um, now I'd like to add a new function next uh, next year where the, all where there the be a button here to display all edX online users and then the quality nominee can award them roles without them having to claim but at the moment it's just that one route so everyone claims quality nominee approves or declines uh, yes so if there's no if there's no one on this screen if you're the quality nominee and the screen's empty you just ask your colleagues to uh, claim a role Question has just come in from Callum, which says, "What's what's the difference between course leader? Does this differ from a lead IV?" Um, in some subjects, Callum, you might, for example, in music, you might have two courses within the one subject. So you might have a lead IV for music, and underneath there might be one course which is a music technology course, and the other one might be a music uh, performance course. Um, so that's why uh, you might have um, course leader and lead IV. Um, yeah. oh, and I've just had one. Uh, I'll just add. 
Uh, I'll just add to that, Tom, that the the course, course leaders, it's, it's not a problem, it's just the only difference. Normally, um, when we talk about B, uh, tech quality assurance and all the handbooks, you've got um, the assessor role is clear, the internal verifier role is clear, and the lead internal verifier role is clear. We've got course lead additionally here. That's because a course leader can create new courses and confirm new courses, whereas uh, assessors can uh, create new assignments and mark assignments, but they can't create whole new courses. So there's just that extra layer of control that quality nominees wanted to um, control access at course building level. Okay, thank you for that. I hope that answers your question, um, Callum. Um, okay, so getting started with my beta, we've talked um, quite a bit about the different roles and how it can help you save time. So now the best thing to do is to to get started and have a go. And um, so we're just going to show you how to quickly do that. So you need to um, get online at mybtech.pearson.com. Um, so it's a subdomain of the main Pearson website. So like we've been saying, it, it talks to the main central Pearson computers. So it's mybtech.pearson.com. Um, probably worth saving that as a bookmark. Um, or the other way to get through to it, as Ben showed you, is if you go through your ed your normal Edexcel online login, and um, on the left hand side, when you choose qualifications and you choose BTEC, where you would normally go for your Oscar or to see your um, external verification report, for example, there's a button there that says My BTEC as well. Um, so, oh, a couple of people asked me the question saying that they. Um, don't have access to my BTEC, that will be because your exams officer just needs to tick a box on your Edexcel online profile to allow you access. Um, so once you've gone there and claimed the role, it might be more than one role, might be more than one subject, claim your roles, wait for your quality nominee to approve you. You can then start building your assignments um, and using the wizards is really simple and like I said if you've got existing assignments you really like, it's just a matter of copy and pasting some of that detail into um, some of the boxes on those wizards. Um, once you start building your assignments, you can create your course, add your team. It says there, import your learners. Obviously, you can't import learners that are not registered. So for any new learners, if you're, for example, if you're designing a course for your current year nines who are going into year 10, until they're actually registered as learners with MyBTEC, they won't show up on the system. Um, but anybody who already is registered as a learner should be on there. And, you, and uh, MyBTEC knows which courses they are able to run, what their qualification registration dates are, um, so it should, you, you won't, will not make any mistakes with that. You can import those learners into your course. Once you get started and you've set this all up, start adding your colleagues to the course. It's not, a, we know that BTECs are a team, um, are administered as a team. Uh, so you need to be working with your colleagues and that, this makes it easier for you to do so. Um, add your assignments to the course, add your assessment dates, add an assessor to those courses and send them to IV approval add learners to the course and make sure your IV, lead IV approves your assessment plan each time any changes are made and for all of those tasks you will get a um, it will ping you on the website to tell you that you have a task that you need to do you'll also notice those tasks are in a specific order because those are the order in which you need to do everything in terms of quality assurance so you can't do things out of order if you're using my BTEC for example you cannot send a um, you cannot send an assignment brief to your learners until the, your um, internal verifier has okayed that assignment brief. Um, similarly, you can't um, you can't offer a resubmission to your learners unless the first submission has been filled out. So all these administrative errors that perhaps your standards verifier might have picked you up on in the past, or that people are struggling to get their heads around, um, my BTEC will not let you make those mistakes, and you have to go through that in that logical order in order to get the assignment brief out to your learners. So um, Hopefully, uh, I think that should have covered um, the getting started and the steps with which you need to go through. Um, just to summarize that MyBTEC allows you to uh, control your provision from one place, so it's really useful for teams. Um, no more printing out of lots of documents. It in ensures that you're getting it right. Like we said, it links to all the Pearson computers. You can't make any mistakes, and it allows you to collaborate as a course team and save time. Hi Tom, I've got a few more questions to I'll just answer verbally a few more questions. Um, I've got an Edexcel logon, but member of my department doesn't. How does she get a login? I think we've covered that that is done by your um, exams officer or, or centre administrator. 
Um, does the work get uploaded to my BTEC from higher down? Thanks for that question. We, we're we looking into this at the moment, so I'd be very interested in any feedback from anyone in this event. All sorts of options are being considered. There's, at the moment, this is the a workflow for assessors for the assessment and internal verification process. And you, the way you communicate with learners is by still handing out or emailing out or uploading to other systems the assignment booths that you generate here and the uh, um, the assessment feedback forms that you generate here uh, and so on. Uh, so uh, what we want to do is move to a system where you can uh, upload samples and then potentially learners can have all their work in there. Uh, but what we don't want is this to become just another sort of e-portfolio um, type thing. There's lots of effective e-portfolios out there. This is something you use alongside Moodle or whatever else you have. So this is a tool for your assessment team. It fits nicely alongside e-portfolios at the moment. So I don't want it to start to overlap and it become a choice between these two things. This does the BTEC assessment process very well and it works with e-portfolios, but we certainly do need to look at how uh, at least samples are transferred around nationally between standards verifiers and centres. So uh, that's very much on the uh, roadmap at the moment. We're, we're doing custom, customer consultations at the moment and we're, we're looking at uh, delivering something next year and hopefully it will connect directly to my BTEC. By the way, my uh, standards verifiers can already access my BTEC if you ask them to. So they, if they're allocated to you, they can log in, look at your subject only, and um, only what's allocated to them, and, and then you, you, they can see your um, assessment plan or whatever you want them to look at. So there's, if you're using my BTEC, you don't need to print and post or, or um, download and attach it to email if they're not there, if you don't want to. You can do that if you prefer, or you can just ask USB to log in and look at something in particular. So I'll just wish to do a couple of other questions. Um, if a IV leaves and a new one is appointed, will the old one be automatically removed throughout my BTEC? So if they, if the Excel online profile is removed, then that person can't get into my BTEC anymore. We're just working on a workflow at the moment to re uh, divvy out all the work that person did. Uh, so that will be a, a good new function to have in the future. So. I mean, one of the advantages of my BTEC is that nothing can be lost. It's there, isn't it, Di digitally? But you might want to re-examine who can access it when someone leaves. And we're, we're, we're just working on that. Um, small centre uh, from Loretta. That's a good question. We are a small centre, therefore, can I be QN, lead IV, IV, teacher and assessor? Yes, you can, Loretta. In fact, you only need to be the top one of those. It's hierarchical. So um, if you're an assessor, you can do everything a teacher can in that subject. If you're an IV, you can do everything an assessor and a teacher can in that subject, and so on, up, up the chain. If you're QN, you can do anything that anyone can do in any sect, sect, sector. You, as QN, may also be the lead IV and uh, an assessor in sport. <laughs> I don't know how likely that scenario is, but as the quality nominee, you, you have all that all-powerful access, so it's hierarchical. So, yes. Uh, a couple more quickly uh, from Val. Do we still have to fill in SOS or does my BTEC do it automatically for us? So um, that's the uh, uh, claim certification method. So at the moment, you uh, you download your tracking sheet and you can use it to slightly speed up the claim form. I really want it to be just a single button so the exams officer can log in, uh, just click a button to um, uh, claim certification. It isn't at the moment though. Um, a halfway point is that we have um, an export in the um, format for the bulk upload claims. So we're, we're going to do that first and then get the integration going after. Do your students have access to the information I create on my BTEC? No, uh, that's from Barney. No, there's no student login. It's just for the assessment team at the moment you um, can uh, email the products out to students. Uh, we are hoping to add learner emails in and then when you click issue an assignment brief it can ping them that way. But really the answer is to integrate with other systems such as Google Classroom and that, that's what I'm researching at the moment. How strict is my BTEC in letting you add assessment records in line with the assessment plan? Um, 
don't fully understand the the question, Cameron. But we, you can you can add any amount of assessments to your plan, and then you can edit anything which hasn't happened yet. So it's it's flexible in in that way. Um, lead IV can just uh, sign off any adjustments you want to make any time. Everyone can see it, uh, and the beauty is it's it's there. One assessment plan for everyone to see. There's no version control. Uh, if you change a date on the assessment plan, it changes the date on the assignment brief. So that's where the digitization um, adds efficiency, isn't it? Will my VTEC in the future give access to marked work examples? We, we've got sample marked learner work online already. Um, I think, yeah, I think something like we have in Results Plus for uh, internal assessment in the future. That's longer term, though, when people start um, using my BTEC consistently reliably over a couple of years. We can then start to look at revealing um, national data in a, in a safe way to other users, so benchmarking perhaps. But at the moment, the terms and conditions keep your data private within the center. And... Um, we don't know that it's a representative sample of users, but as the um, as we get as we get more confident about there being a cross section, we we can move towards that sort of thing. But it is very much not next year; it's a longer term thing. But we do recognise the hunger for a national benchmarking data and internal assessment. And while it's not digitised, we've got no hope of moving towards that. The more people use my BTEC, the more uh, possibilities we we have. When will the new 2016 Level 3 qualification be uploaded to my BTEC? Uh, I've just logged on and I, I can't find uh, my course. They, they already are, Michelle, actually. So if you've uh, got a role claimed for uh, media, then yeah, they should be there. The only, some of the specifications online are draft. Uh, specifications, not yet gone through the accreditation process. So, for example, um, child care for memory, the two smaller sizes are accredited and are therefore on my BTEC. The two larger ones, uh, not yet, uh, but they, as soon as they are, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, uh, support them on here. So whilst on the website you can publish draft specs in my BTEC because you can actively do things with them um, move forward. We want to make sure that specification is absolutely final before we uh, turn them on. Uh, the new 2016 BTECs auto approvals have been run. So for centres who have offered both exams with Joint Council Qualifications approval and um, uh, and the sort of predecessor BTEC National, those two boxes ticked, we would have automatically approved you. If not, you can claim, uh, you can request uh, approval to offer the new qualification.